This episode of On the Line is presented to you by Living.Fit, your one stop for all your fitness needs. Make sure you go download the app Living.Fit today. Now here's the show. Welcome to On the Line. Today is Tuesday, June 21st, and we got a great show for you guys. We got Christos Yagos on the program. We got Cody Law on the program. Very fun show. We wrap up with our winners and losers for the week and some shout outs. But uh, without further ado, if you're listening on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Listen on Apple, Spotify, Deezer, Stitcher, or any podcasting platform. Hit that follow, maybe leave a review. Uh, without further ado, let's go on into Christos Yagos. We are joined by a very special guest. He's a California kid turned Florida man. We are joined by Christos Yagos. Dude, how's Florida treating you? Oh man, I love it. I fell in love. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I thought I was never going to leave Cali. I was like Hawthorne native, you know, LA for sure, all day, ride or die, you know? And uh, after COVID happened, it started turning to crap. And um, I just didn't like all, I didn't like it politically. I still love the weather. I, I love all my friends and family, but um, just the rules and whatnot. So I was kind of getting burnt out a little bit and um, was open to change a little more, but not really, you know what I mean? I never wanted to leave my hometown and I might go back, who knows? But my wife got an opportunity to move to Florida and like with her job, they, they, they kind of said as a joke, they're like, Hey, does your husband, uh, would he be able to uh, train in Florida? And little, you know, yeah, it's one of the best spots to go train. <laughs> so she brought it up to me at first. I said, no. And then like, it was in my head and I'm like thinking about it. Like, okay, wait a second. All right, babe, let's make a pros and cons list. We made a pros and cons. I never done that before. They work. We did they it. Do. They do. And holy crap, the pros like way outweigh the yeah. cons. But we wanted to buy property out there. I was looking like 500000 was like my limit, you know, and I could barely get a condo, maybe a townhome. But and during COVID, everyone's buying things cash. So you got to offer like 50 to 100 grand over asking price. I looked at some properties over here in Florida right away and I saw like what I can get. And I was like, Oh, wow. Uh, oh, okay. Um, so we thought about it. We made a pros and cons list. The only thing, the worst thing was me not having any steady income because I had a bunch of clients out there and then friends and family. Yeah. But both our careers was a great move. We got a beautiful house. You know what I mean? 13,000 square feet of land. So, um, yeah, we're really, really happy. And um, I'm, I'm falling in love. I'm beating a lot of a lot of friends at the new gym. Uh, I'm getting to train with high level guys all the time. So I'm definitely a lot better now. Um, and you'll, you'll see this Saturday. I'm definitely uh, a different level of Christos. So I'll tell you that. Yeah, I, I'm expecting it, which we'll get to in a second. Do you miss helping out though at the family restaurant? Is that, I feel like that'd be one of the cons. Like you had to leave the family restaurant. Well, you know, I was going to take it over, but then, you know, I took a fight on three days notice and bounced out the restaurant, did the fight, came back. Then I got another fight, ended up snagging the bonus. And I told my dad, I was like, dad, like, if I, I, I don't want to do this. I want to, I want to do my dream. I want to, I want to put it, go all in. You know what I mean? I want to be all in this. And um, so he just decided to sell it. And now he's retired. He's in Greece right now. So we don't have it no more. They sold it. Uh, my dad has a little bit of money now, just kind of, you know, wing off. My mom's doing fine. She has a bunch of roommates that pay her rent. So um, they're going to be okay. So the fact, the restaurant's a hard business, you know what I mean? And I probably wouldn't have been happy if I, if I did that, to be honest. So um, I was down to help my dad, but you know what I mean? I got, I got to live my dream. Is your dad a native Greek? Is he actually from originally from Greece or is it just a son? Both, both, both my parents are. Really? Okay. So he's back in the homeland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's back with his brother, his sister, his cousins, and uh, yeah, he's, they're full-blown Greeks. They both came here from Greece. I'm first generation. Uh-huh. That's why uh, my English is not that good. I well, mean, your English I, is good. Your English is good. I don't know. You're, there's, there's... Okay. I, I've always struggled in school with like English and spelling and vocabulary because I had nobody to teach me proper English. I, mm. I got bad English, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> obviously, it, with schooling, it, it developed decent, but... I'm still struggling with, you know, my vocabulary a little bit. I'm trying to read a little bit more, so it's helping. But 
um, I was always good at math. My brain's my, my brain works fine, <laughs> but it just I wasn't able to. I was I struggled academically because I didn't have anybody to kind of help help me. My mom couldn't really help me with my stuff because she didn't understand what I was doing. So, yeah. Well, if it makes you feel any better, uh, I definitely couldn't tell you were not innate. Like I, I couldn't tell like you were struggling with English. So I think you're doing a pretty damn good job. Yeah, I've listened yeah, to a lot of your past interviews. Like you, you have a pretty, you're pretty good at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That came with time. I struggled in the beginning. My first couple fights, I ran on the mic. I didn't even know what I was saying. <laughs> a lot of my friends kind of bag on me because what during like text and my spelling and whatnot. But whatever, it is what it is. I'm a lot better now. Like this, this, this is coming from like the past, you know, 15 years, you know what I mean? So now I'm 32 years old. Um, I, I, I feel I'm pretty normal now for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and one more thing before we head into the fight game and talk about this new Christos. So how long did it take you to find your wife's earring in that pool? About 40 minutes, 30, oh, 40. That's not bad. Not too bad. No, no, no. Um, I had an idea cause I found the backing first right away, but I didn't find the earring, so I searched. I ran around the whole pool, whole pool, whole pool. I was like, you know what? I'm going back to that spot. And it was just, it was in the corner. And it was, like, uh, raining hard, too. And it was kind of cool in a way. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, life. Life, happy life. <laughs> yes, happy life, happy life. And so one, one other thing, too. So, like, I know, one thing I've also noticed is, like, I don't know if this is intentional, but, like, after you lose, you, like, get a new look. Is that intentional or does that just kind of happen? I just change my look all, all the time. Um, okay. I get bored. I get bored. I get bored. Um, I like and the hair grows back, you know. So I just like to mess with my hair. Try try everything out at least once. The the only one I haven't done yet is a mullet. That's coming next. <laughs> Ooh, I was about to say I'm the same way. I have a different haircut like every six months. I had a mullet for a minute. I have like the long on top. I had like the mohawk mullet thing. I don't even know what the yeah. fuck it is. I've but had like, my hair mohawks. I had it all. Long hair braids. Um, What's funny, I say something now, I forgot. But yeah, I couldn't grow a beard for a long time because I went through a little party phase and I was like partying a lot, but then I was also training full time. So I was just kind of running my body through a system. I developed some like alopecia and I lost all my like facial, like, like I was like very, very patchy. It started coming out a little spot and just grew. It's still like a little bit back here, but now I'm a lot healthier. I don't really drink that much anymore at all. Um, so I, and me and my wife are really like on um, eating clean, trying to stay away from like preservatives, even though it's like almost impossible because they put stuff in the meat, they put stuff in the water, they put stuff in everything. So we're trying our best, you know, to do our best to be as healthy as we can. And um, it just started growing back. And yeah. I'm like, I'm rocking the beard for a bit. You know what I mean? I'm going to see how long I can grow it. So we'll see. <laughs> I mean, it help, it help, it's par- allegedly, apparently it helps with like the chin. So, I mean, we want to deal about getting worried, worried about getting knocked out, even though like you really have really to deal with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> a little extra padding, a little extra padding. <laughs> I have the same well, issue though. I'm a little patchy on the side. So it's like, it's still rough, but it's not. No, it like was that. The whole middle wouldn't even grow. It was like, I would have to shave every single day. Cause, or you'll like two days, you'll start seeing it all like weird and gross and, People ask questions. So I just kept it shaved. So yeah, it's called the chin chin gear. Chin gear. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about this new Cristo. So obviously, like the last fight didn't go your way, but I mean to make even like you don't want to like make excuses or anything, but like Armand's probably like the hottest prospect, probably the best prospect in 155 at the moment. Um, and it didn't go your way. But honestly, for me, when I was watching the fight, it almost looked like when he got you, almost like you just kind of like tripped over yourself, and that kind of was what fucked you over. Is no, that kind of accurate? I know, obviously he clipped you, but was it you almost feel yeah. like you could have stood and just kind of tripped over yourself? He, he he clipped me, and I don't really remember after that really. So I, I just remember like, oh, fight's over. Shit, I lost. <laughs> but um, but you know, I, when I, my, my manager they offered me that fight, nobody would take a fight against him, and no. they offered me August, but like I was getting ready to move to Florida, you know. And so I said, hey, I'm about to move. Like, can we do it later? And then he said September, like the next month. And I already told him later I'll do it. But I didn't know it out that soon. But I don't want to say no because I never really say no to fights. Um, if you look at my guys, I fought. I fought a bunch of studs. Yeah. So um, I'm always game. But, like, no, like, I, I'm not the guy who makes excuses. He, he won that night. He was a better fighter that night. I was definitely in shape. And I prepped as much as I can. But I went to a new gym. I just beat one of their guys. He's actually been cornering me now. But. He's a cool, super cool guy, Sean. But I beat one of their guys. I don't know nobody. So when I'm sparring, I don't know anybody's game. I'm, like, new to it. 
And I was, I didn't, I wasn't sure if I had a good camp or not. Cause you know, I had no coaches telling me nothing. Um, I didn't know anybody. It was awkward. And um, I just felt off to be honest. And I'm not just saying that. Um, I know this because fight week was the most nervous I've ever been for a fight. And I've fought studs before. You know what I mean? I knew like Charles Oliveira, Josh, that and I've never been this nervous. And I'm like, damn, and I was just worried about if I had a good camp or not, but um, mental game is definitely most of the fight. And, a lot of people from the gym after the fight told me I probably should have took the fight. It was a little soon. I lost you there a little bit. No excuses, but um, I know my mental game was there. Physically, I was there. Mentally, I wasn't. A lot of people, Derek Brunson told me, like, hey, I was going to tell you, you shouldn't have took that fight that soon. The UFC is trying to, you know, hype these guys up. You should have took a couple of fights. Get used to Florida a little bit. So it is what it is. But walking into this fight, I feel a lot more confident. I got a lot more friends, guys. Sorry, my dog's making a little squeaky noise. <laughs> it's fine. Um, we've, had, we've had worse. We've had worse. Um, so now, like, guys that, like, were giving me trouble in the beginning, um, I'm doing a lot better with now. So, like, just the confidence walking into this fight is just awesome. You know what I mean? Like, doing rounds for my for Armin fight, I wasn't winning most rounds. You know what I mean? It, it was tough getting adapted to every round being a hard go. And now I'm, like, one of the, I feel like I'm one of the best guys in the gym. Um, one of them, you know, there's a lot of good guys, but I, I, I'm definitely well respected now. People know who I am, and um, I feel just a lot more confident walking in this fight for sure. Oh, 100%. And I, th- I think it's, and it's another thing too, where like, I don't know, man, just kind of, you've, as you said, you kind of just take killers and you kind of just don't know how to say no. I feel like that's kind of kind of be a thing. Like, you literally, you got out of the UFC, you go and fight Josh Emmett. I don't I mean, I don't think we'd all know Josh would be what he is now, but I mean, that was still a tough yeah. fucking fight right out of the UFC. He was undefeated. It was for a title fight. I wanted to get back as soon as I can. So I was like, let's do it. And when I got cut, I got cut for some bullshit anyway, man. I didn't even lose two in a row or nothing like that. I just, um, the new Reebok deal came. They cut a grip of fighters. And I was just one of those guys that got the shit in the stick. They still paid because they resigned me first. And then they still paid me my show money because they owed me a fight. So it was just, I got bad luck, you know. Yeah, but yeah. ever since I've been back, I've been doing some damage. So um i'm ready to keep it going exactly. keep it rolling exactly and now but the ufc probably also will hold you to a higher regard now they'll probably treat you better now especially if you took the fight against armand and as he said no one really wants to yeah. fight him it's hard for him to find a fight and so just real quick before we keep moving on is out of all those killers you have fought who do you think has hit the hardest hit the hardest hit the hardest because you've hit some hard probably, hitters probably, probably josh Emmett. really and he's at 145 yeah, Damn. Well, I fought him. He was a lot bigger. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but, but he was just, he was big. Yeah. He was big. I watched him like, damn, he looks a lot smaller. He's not as muscular um, as when I fought him. If you look at the weigh-in pictures, he he was pretty big when I fought him. And um, yeah. So, but yeah, he hits he hits pretty damn hard. Was, was <laughs> um, it was it weird when you went went to Sanford though? Like, was it when you started training with like Gilbert and guys like that that you like fought in the past? Yeah, Gilbert. Gilbert's cool. Yeah, he's um, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sean's super cool. It, it, like at the end of the day, it's all business. Sean, he fought four guys at that gym already. <laughs> <laughs> but he fights him, comes to the gym. It's crazy. <laughs> it is wild. It is wild. And so now you're so and let's talk about this upcoming fight, man. As we said, like we got this new crease coming in. You're fighting another prospect in Tiago Moises. Uh, and it kind of sounds like your confidence is even though you're coming off a knockout loss, it's kind of at an all-time high. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. This yeah, Tiago's good. He was in ranked number 14 at one point. Very technical fighter, good jujitsu, and I think my jujitsu is underrated. If he wants to take me down, he can go ahead and try. Uh, Armin tried to take me down; he couldn't get it done. But then you clipped me. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, I feel like I'm gonna defend the takedowns, and I just feel like I'm a, I'm a little more violent. And uh, he doesn't do so well off his back foot, and that's what I plan to do: is put him on his back foot. I'll bring the fight to him, but obviously I have to be patient, not make any mistakes. Um, guys like this, is you can't make mistakes or they'll capitalize. So just being patient, just picking picking my shots. And um, once I feel him kind of feeling the pressure, just let it all go. Exactly. And I know one thing you said in the past too is like when you, I think it was like Oliveira was the last time you really felt like this. It's like you were so freaked out when you got to the ground. You're like, you kind of just so focused on getting back up. Is that one of the things you've yeah. kind of been focusing on this camp too is like trying to make sure like I'm good on the ground. Like I don't have to freak out and worry about getting up right away. Yeah, like my 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 my, my jujitsu old Jiva Santana, he told me he's like, you need to trust your jujitsu. You know what I mean? Because I got good jujitsu, and instead of panicking and knowing I'm not supposed to be there, oh, I gotta get up. 
play the jiu-jitsu game. If I lose a round, lose a round, I'll get another one. You know, I won the first round with Charles over there. So if I would just play jiu-jitsu, gave him that round, we would have won the third round 1-1. One, one. Who knows what would happen, you know? So I just got to learn not to panic. And when I'm in a bad situation, just stay calm and, and work out of it smartly instead of just stressing out and trying to force to get up. And that's what I try to do. And But he, like I said, I made a mistake and he capitalized. And Charles Oliveira is not a guy you got to make mistakes with. <laughs> and he is the champion. So that's, that's another, again, if you kind of look back on the losses you've had too, like every single person you've lost to is either A, a highly touted prospect, or is like a pretty much contender slash champion. Like it's just... Yeah. And so it's just like, it's not like you're losing to a bunch of bums. You're losing to guys who are like legit guys. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's nothing you really do about that. So it sounds like the nine month layoff too, then was more of just you getting, a, getting used to Florida, getting a real like good amount of time at in Sanford uh, to get prepared for exactly. your fight. I told my manager, I'm going to take the rest of the year off. Um, I just want to get more adapted, kind of get a little feel for Florida, um, you know, settle in my house. Cause like yeah. in my first days of training camp, I didn't even have my clothes here. <laughs> I was using like, <laughs> Train, wash it, train, wash it. And I borrowed some clothes from one of the teammates there. So, like, it was just, it was a mess. So, everything's good now. I'm settled in. I feel great. I feel confident. I got the dream team um, cornering me. I got Greg, Henry, and Sean Soriano. Ooh. So, everything's uh, going well. You know what I mean? Everything's going really good. I, I couldn't ask for a better camp this camp around. And I just hit my all-time best run. I always do, like, a three-mile run to kind of test myself to see where I'm at. My best time before this was... Uh, three miles for like six eighteen minute mile pace. This run I just hit six fourteen minute mile pace. So I'm definitely in the best shape I've ever been in. So I'll let it all show out on Saturday. No big deal. No big deal. Is it nice to be fighting in the states again too? Because I feel like you for a while you were like literally traveling everywhere, and now you've had a little yeah. streak of being back in the states consistently. I, I did five countries, well, with the U.S. being one of them, but five countries and five fights before, so it was pretty, pretty gnarly. It was pretty. But it's pretty cool though, too. Do you kind of miss it a little bit, or you kind of, or are you like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with fighting in the states? Uh, it was, it was good as an experience, but I'd rather fight in the states. The whole <laughs> jet lag, traveling, it, it does take it out of you. I, I enjoyed it when it was happening, but now I just, uh, unless it's like Japan, I want to fight Japan and. Love. It's one of those I'd love to go, but besides that, I'd rather fight in the states. What was the worst? What was the hardest place to adjust, like in terms of jet lag and all that? What was the hardest place? Russia. 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 Well, that that night before weigh-ins, I didn't sleep a single minute. I was just in bed trying to sleep and just stayed in bed for about six hours, just close my eyes trying to stay asleep. I couldn't do it. I couldn't sleep. I went. I weighed in and then took the fattest nap I did. I had like a <laughs> That's the daytime. Oh, that fucks yeah, up your sleep the next night, though. So you probably didn't get like a full night's sleep before the fight. That sounds like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a wild fight too. I thought I won that fight. Was Even got so that guy trains at Sanford as well. He hasn't been there in a while, Shamil. Yeah. Um, under, uh, I fought like the Russian prospect over there, and uh, everyone told me like some of the guys watched that rewatched that fight after they found out I fought him, and some guys at the gym told me they thought I won that fight. I dropped them in the first and the third round. You know what I mean? You got to give me those rounds, you know. So. I broke his orbital in the third. I definitely won the first round, that, and I lost a split decision in Russia. You know what I mean? I, so. There might have been some bias there. There might have been a little bit of hometown cooking. I, I didn't want to bring it up. You brought it up, though. I was like, that that's a little bit of hometown cooking there. <laughs> yeah, and then a, a bunch of the – after I fought for ACB again after that, a bunch of the Russians was like, hey, did you think you won that fight? You should call him out again. Do you think you won? You should call him out again. Because even some of the guys thought, like, I should call them out and refight him. But – I don't really want to fight the same guy twice unless it's like for like a top spot. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, what's yeah. Done is I showed what I did in that fight. Everyone can go watch it. And watch it help. So yeah. yeah. Bigger and better things. Maybe if it's like a top 10 spot. Yeah. We'll find them again. But like that's you're, you're yeah. on the bigger and better things, though. bigger and better things in the second UFC stint. Uh, and so like, uh, obviously like we talked about it a minute ago. It's like, you're just excited to get back in the octagon. You're like, it's all time high. It's like, what excites you most about the Moises matchup though? The fact that he's he's been in the top 15 already, so beating him will definitely show that I belong in the top 15. And um, after this, you know, I get my hand raised. I want to I want to call out I, no nobody in specific like in particular, which I just want another top 15 spot. I think I blew my last shot with Armin, but obviously he's probably going to be a title contender at some point. So um, I just want another run at it. Um, I definitely know I belong. I, I'm I'm confident enough knowing I belong and. I'm pretty well-rounded. I, I think I'm as well-rounded as they come. You know, I got great striking. I got good wrestling. I got, I'm almost in the top 10 current guys with the most takedowns um, right now. So I got 20 takedowns in the UFC already. I think the number 10 spots like 21. Maybe it's more now. I don't know, but 
I just checked it like a couple weeks ago. So, I mean, like a couple months ago. So I don't know if it's changed, but yeah, um, I was ranked number seven for my takedown accuracy. My jiu-jitsu is good. I'll tell you, it's very underestimated. So um, yeah, but I definitely want to get the knockout this time. Yes. Yeah, so one other finish. Cause you got the first finish for what? Like at 262, you got your first finish, what, like five years? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I go for finishes just... Sometimes they don't, you know, they go down, but they don't stay down. <laughs> Didn't you admit, though, like in the fight against, I think it was Minas, when you said, like, I just wanted to get the win. I was just, because it was a short, was it was that the short notice one? You're like, I just want to get the win and not worry about anything else. I notice I had him in a rear naked choke. I thought I, I had it under the neck, but I didn't have my hooks in. So he snuck out of it. And then when I had him in the head and arm, um, I definitely could finish it now, but I was not confident with that choke um, before. And after that fight, I went and now I can do that choke really well. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, that fight, definitely. I just want to make sure I had the gas to, yeah. to get through it. All I was doing, I had neck surgery prior to that. Um, so all I was doing was running. I was running like 10 miles at a time and I was doing jiu-jitsu and that's about it. I didn't do any really striking that much. And I was just kind of making sure my neck was good. And I wanted the fight and I thought I wasn't going to fight in 2020. And then they called me on Wednesday. Hey, he got COVID. Rick Glenn got COVID. You want to step in? This is a great matchup for you. He, his ground's not that good. I've been doing a lot of jujitsu, so I knew I can squeeze out the win. And I was hoping to get the finish, but I didn't want to overexert myself. No, no. You got to get, sometimes you yeah. got to go for the paycheck. And also just yeah. like to, you know, stay in the UFC. You already got cut once. You don't want to get cut again. So that's always, exactly, exactly, yeah, don't want to go exactly. through that again. I'm excited to see the new version of you, especially like, I mean, you've been a durable guy. You're, you're, you're very well rounded. So I'm excited to see what's going forward, but let's move on. I'm going to get to know you a little bit. There's other things I want to talk about outside the fight game a little bit. First off, is it true you like grew up in a trailer? Uh, a little bit. Um, yeah, you did some research, huh? Yeah. Uh, um, when I was about uh, eight, nine years old, my mom, she bought a house prior, but then the mm, 2008, the recession. no, I was 18. Yeah. The... No, 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 that was way before that. It was like 2000. Yeah. About 2000, like 1999, 2000, we moved to a trailer park in Gardena and we lived in a trailer while my mom rented her house out. Um, and, uh, yeah, I was there for about four years, maybe three, four years. And, um, then we moved back because I still went to school where we lived in Hawthorne and, um, but yeah, we, we, we grew up there a little bit and, um, looking, but I, it seemed good while I was there, but looking back, it was very trashy, <laughs> very good. <laughs> very trashy. Yeah. And, um, a lot of bad things like, you know, with some family stuff and yeah. 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 So just. Yeah, it is what it is. Come a little bit from the trailer park. But then we moved back to the house and everything was good about that. But we always had roommates. My mom had people living in our house so she can help pay rent. Because my mom, my dad wasn't always in the picture, in and out, in and out. And um, my mom needed money because she worked two jobs, you know, and so she needed help paying the mortgage. And yeah, and just a little bit of a struggle. But seeing my mom go through it, I mean, she's still doing it. <laughs> um, but her go through it um definitely helped me become a, a hard worker she taught me how to be a hard worker and then we opened up the restaurant when i was about 17 years old uh right after i graduated high school like, they just put me to work you know i started going to el camino college for a little bit but they kind of like egged me to drop out so i could help out because they just opened up a second one after that and that one didn't do so well so they sold it but we had one that did pretty good and um that that pretty much saved my family yeah yeah you know sometimes those hardships that really mold you and kind of like help you become successful later on because you see that stuff don't want to go deal with it again especially now looking back you're probably like man that's crazy what i went through and this is this is going to sound super not close-minded or like whatever i'm gonna sound stupid as shit being in the midwest i, I don't know why i've never associated tra trailers and stuff like in southern california you think of southern california in the midwest you always think of like you know palm trees houses all that kind of stuff but just stupid for me to think but i always thought of trailers in like the midwest the south in like Canada, I don't know why. <laughs> it just nah, they're, they're ghetto everywhere. spots in California they're everywhere. that happen yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's where I learned how to drive when I was like ten years old, <laughs> going around the trailer. Three <laughs> big lanes. It's a big trailer park actually, and um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it just taught me grit. Taught me how to be tough. So, in a way, I'm kind of happy. So, you know, it, it is who I am. It, it makes who I am. Exactly. I never tell. 
never wish for anything else. No, exactly. It's like those, you never know. Who knows where you'd be if you didn't live in the trailer park? You just Maybe you would still be at the restaurant. Who knows what would happen? You just don't know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. well, if I didn't have fighting, I'd probably be like a plumber or something. But you know what? I know some plumbers who make really good money. <laughs> they do make money. Like electricians make like 100K a year. They're making better money than most yeah. of us out here. <laughs> yeah. I was in school. There was like I tried to tell you a joke because I didn't know what I wanted to be when I grew up. And the teacher asked me in like I think the fifth or sixth, fifth grade or something, like, "Hey, what do you guys want to be when you grow up?" So they go around everyone telling what they want to be. You know, doctor, firefighter, this, that. And I said, "I want to be a plumber." And I got in trouble with the teacher. Kids laughed. Oh. And um, no, I'm good. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Kids, kids laughed at me. And then um, now my my girl's dad makes over six figures i have a friend who has a plumbing business makes over a million dollars a year in his business and he pays all his guys six figures so it's like all right guys maybe i'm not so stupid your teacher making forty fifty thousand dollars a year mm, hello i think so you're <laughs> onto something early on like what the fuck they're giving yeah. how'd you get in why'd you get in trouble for saying you wanted to be a plumber like you didn't know you want to be like i don't know a plumber you're like yeah people think plumbing's dirty and nasty and whatnot mm-hmm. but um yeah, it is what it is. But um, I was gonna say something. Uh, yeah, uh, I forgot. I've always wanted to be a pro athlete. Though. I wanted to be in the NFL first. I've always drawn to be an activity. If I wasn't a pro athlete, I'd probably do some type of job like construction or plumbing, something active. Yeah, I'm just an act- active guy, and I just anything I do has to be active. And the big dream, long term dream, is I want to open up my own gym. So we'll see where that goes. Exactly. And you got a lot, you can also probably get experience with that, like over at the gym you work out at. So, um, yeah. speaking of football, you're a big Rams guy. How stoked were you when they moved from St. Louis to LA? Oh man, I was so happy because I've been a Rams fan for a long time. And when they came, I, I got season passes. I still got season passes. And I was so upset they lost the 49ers because I would have got Super Bowl tickets for super oh, cheap. Yeah. You know? We're at home, and uh, they since we didn't win that game, we didn't have a home to fill the advantage. So they only gave like twenty five percent of the ticket holders tickets, and I wasn't one of those guys. Um, I'm gonna have to go in this room because my phone's gonna die in a second. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, we're 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 getting close. We're getting close. <laughs> Appreciate it. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, right. Oh, hello. You there? Yeah, All we're right, good. We're right. good. We're good. All right. So yeah. Yeah, go Rams. So we were pretty stoked then when they got Matt Stafford. We were like, all right, we're going to win the Super Bowl. Like, this is it. We're finally, we're making the moves. I, I, I was super stoked because I was super stoked with Jared Goff. But then he just – he's like either really good or really shitty. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's no, like, middle ground no. for that guy. No, there's no so, – McVay could only do so much with Goff. Only so much. Yeah, and then uh, when I got Matt Stafford, they started, like, comparing his numbers, like Tom Brady and how good he is and – I was like, all right, hopefully this is the one. And it was, you know, first year on the Rams, won the Super Bowl. Yeah, it is. It is. And then also, you are I heard you're not, like, I know you used to be, a, you're a Kobe guy. Do you not, and then you say you don't really like LeBron and the Lakers? Or are you going to be cool with uh, What about now? No? I, I kind of just well, stopped watching basketball after Kobe yeah. left. Um, I would just, I grew up with Kobe, and I've only watched games just to see him play. I just wanted, I just wanted to see him do well. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, and then there are some other players on the team that I like, like Paul Gasol. I liked him a lot. Yeah. I was happy about Steve Nash, but that year they didn't do so well. Did you like Ron Artest, um, Metal World Peace? That was my guy. Oh, yeah. I, I, I love Metal World Peace. Yeah. I, I mean, Ron Artest, when he hit that three in the Celtic game, that was lit. And that was one of the most craziest seventh games ever. Hey, hey, go, go, go. <laughs> my, my dog wants to play. No, you're good. My, I mean, um, my dog's barking upstairs, so I feel that, so – Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um but yeah ever since you left i just kind of fell off basketball and i think lebron is one of the greatest players I've ever played no doubt i just don't really like him as a person i think he's a baby <laughs> he's too damn big to be like flopping like that and just complaining all the damn time and that's why i just love kobe's grit you know he was yeah. just he was down for anything and just yeah him and i like jordan too i mean i never got to grow up watching jordan but you know i watched documentaries and yeah. i watched a lot on him i thought he was he was really down too so i'm a big fan of him as well and um i like i actually like steph curry if if they're in the playoffs and the game's on i'll definitely love to watch i like him because he's little and he does damage so yeah. i like when guys 
have things like against like you know he's little but they still do well yeah and um but yeah and lebron just like he's too damn good too damn big to be just complaining all the damn time and yeah. then he tries to get into politics and all that and after that i was just like man but i hated him for a while i wanted him to be the greatest player to never win a championship but uh, too late. so far that's why i didn't like the celtics they would like uh literally every possession jason tatum and Jalen brown would be bitching the finals about like not getting a yeah, yeah. that's why i like the warriors steph never complained well steph did complain but he'd hit the shot though and be like, whatever. very, very, very little, very, very little. little. He's like, um, he's like six feet. It's not, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's, yeah. you see yourself in them too. Like you can see yourself a little bit like, all right, like I'm not going to be as fast and maybe not as quick as him, but like maybe I could shoot as well if I like really try, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. that little bit of believability in it, which is, that is the fun part. All right, man. So I've taken up your time and uh, really appreciate you coming on. But before I let you go, uh, obviously you said you want to get the knockout with Tiago Moises. Obviously you're not going to say loss or decision. Uh, how? What round? How do you see this fight going out? And how do you see you yourself knocking out Tiago Moises? Um, to be a realist, probably second round. I think the first round would just be more about like learning what he's going to do, kind of trying to read him. But if I can snag him in the first round, that'd be great. I'll be throwing hard, so um, I mean, I'm sure it only takes one, and I hit pretty hard. And so, um, but I'm going to call a second round knockout. Second round knockout. Love to hear it, man. So before I let you go, again, if you want to thank anyone, thank any sponsors or anything like that, go ahead. Just thank my team, everybody who's helped me out, everybody at Sanford, my coaches, Henry Hoof, Sean Soriano, and Greg, and just everybody who's just been a part of the team and part of my camp. And, yeah, that's about it. Love to hear it. All right. Thanks for coming on the show, man. No worries, man. Appreciate having me on. Love talking to my man, Christo Salas Spartan, the Greek, my man. But uh, I want to once again thank the sponsor of the show, Living.Fit. Living.Fit is a health and wellness company that will help you achieve all your goals from building muscle, losing fat, or just to try something new. Not only are there workout programs, but we can help with your nutrition and build out your home gym. For all my personal trainers out there looking to get certified in battle rope or kettlebell movements, we're the place to be. Make sure you go visit the website or download the app, Living.Fit. Now back to Cody Law. By a very, very special guest. He's one of the biggest prospects in MMA right now. He's a number one, nine ranked fighter in Bellator in their featherweight division. We are joined by Cody Law. Dude, how is the hotel? And uh, where are you guys fighting? We're in Connecticut right now. That's so right. uh, Mohegan Sun. Ooh, oh, yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. It's my favorite place. Maybe my favorite place. It's, I fought, it's been my fifth fight here. So I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty used to it by now. Yeah, kind of just like kind of a clockwork at this point. It's going there, kind of doing all the kind of going through the, going through the motions there at this point. Yeah, yeah, I know the routine. It's pretty nice. I'm familiar with the place, so I like it. Well, would you rather? So then, here, here's a quick thing. Would you rather fight in, like, let's say you're, they're building a fight around you? Would you rather fight in Pittsburgh or down in Miami? Yeah, Pittsburgh. Uh, I'd rather fight in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh would be amazing because I have so many like friends and family that that would make it. You know, Florida's amazing too because uh, I have an apartment there. So I can just drive, drive to the fight, you know what I mean, and no income tax. But Pittsburgh is the dream. Yeah, yeah. And worst case scenario, you can just like stay at parents' house or something like, or you'd probably go to a hotel, but like you like kind of like living like yeah. a little kid, like I'm about to fight for a world title or devil or whatever, and uh, just kind of wake up, kind of like a the child the child dream, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think that'll be the day, man. That'll be that'll be like maybe a world title fight in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. Maybe one day, one day. Probably yeah. one day, one day. Not maybe, probably. No, so, no, it's it's gonna happen. <laughs> it's gonna happen. It's, it's gonna, gonna happen. happen. So I know you're a big whiskey guy. Uh, so as a whiskey connoisseur, what's more disrespectful, screwball or fireball? Oh, good one. <laughs> good one. There's no right answer here. <laughs> I, say, I don't drink either of them. I figured you didn't, but I thought I'd at least ask. I feel like for yeah. me, I would say Fireball. It's a little harder to mix with other stuff. Can't make fancy cocktails or whatever. Screw about least you can use it with stuff. Like a peanut butter and jelly kind of like cocktail shit. I don't know. You can't do stuff with Fireball. Yeah. I don't even I don't even do cocktails like that, though. Neither I only drink I. like old fashions for, for a cocktail, a mint julep or an old fashioned. Yeah. But uh, I'm That's not. I'm not making no peanut butter and jelly. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not doing that shit either. I'm just saying. If you're like, if you're thinking like, all right, all right. You know, you know. Like, if you're actually gonna use it for purposeful, like, you know, you, you yeah. do that. You know, you know. Nothing yeah, like yeah, the I trouble understand. whiskey though. Nothing like the trouble whiskey. You can. No, nothing anything. like that. No, nothing like <laughs> that. I I do like to mix the trouble whiskey actually sometimes. I like to mix it with um, like a, a like a root beer zevia. I tried it a couple times. It's pretty damn good. I've never done it. I've never mixed root beer with whiskey before. It's good. Yeah, I did it with uh, with whiskey and uh, cream soda. Both. They're both pretty good. 
No, the cream soda sounds like that. Yeah, I know that would be good. Yeah. I like whiskey ginger, so I feel like that has to be yeah. pretty damn good. Yeah. Dude, the best is the uh, – I'm not a big gin guy normally, but Trouble just came out with gin, and I actually really like it, and I've been mixing it with uh, Zevia Lemon Lime Twist. You ever had that one? No. Nah. Lemon Lime Twist with the gin is, like, the most refreshing thing. All I want to do after this fight is, like, go back to Pennsylvania at summertime and have some of that. And whiskey, of course. Oh, of course. And the cigars. Can't forget the cigars. Celebrate. I have a bag of cigars with me right now. Oh, really? Did you already pre-pick all the, all the cigars for after the fight? Yeah. Well, I have this. You ever heard of a brand called Gurkha? Nah. Well, maybe. It's a uh, Florida brand. I did a commercial for them recently, and they gave me a bunch. So I'm bringing them home to try them. I haven't got to try them. Because oh, uh, I, I was in fight camp whenever they gave them to me. Yeah, I can't really do that. I know, don't you like? Didn't you say like in an interview you drink like non-alcoholic beer like during your camps? Yeah, yeah, it's actually pretty good though. It's uh, this brand called Athletic Brewing. Oh it, yeah, dude, it tastes like an IPA, like it identical. Is it just so like you have something to drink with, just like when you're out doing whatever? You, oh, it's just like you have like a drink in your hand. Is no, that kind of why? I drink it. No, I, I don't really. I don't go out when I'm in fight camp, but at home I do. I drink it. Like I, I put a, a glass in the freezer, or an I, ice cold IPA. And drink it, you know. I like the taste of an IPA. Oh, okay. Well, I'm not. I'm not really an IPA guy. It. Not really. Not really an IPA yeah. guy. Yeah. I, I, like I, I, haven't, I haven't gotten there. I think I'm a year. I think I'm a year away. Like I'm only like a year younger than you, so I'm probably about a year away. Yeah. From, like an IPA's. Yeah, you yeah. might be. Well, I liked IPAs a couple years ago, so you gotta catch uh, up here. But yeah, I might be a little behind. My taste buds might be a little behind there. What but, about uh, stouts? I like stouts. Yeah, they make good stouts too. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll have to try those some. out. I'll have to try those out. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't really gotten into the non-alcoholic beer yet, so I'll have to. I'll have to try it out. Well, you don't really have a reason. No, I don't. Know? I don't. I'm not in a fight camp. I'm not cutting weight. I'm not really yeah. going out of my way to do that. But I've always said I wanted yeah. to do a mock cut with somebody, even though that's probably a terrible idea. It'd be kind of uh-huh. good for content. I think it'd be kind you of. You don't want to do that. No, not really. You don't, you don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you anyway, don't do I don't want to do that. So let's go. Let's get into this fight, man. So obviously you're you're six and zero, about to go into seven and zero. Um, and I think one of the biggest things with this past this past knockout was you literally wrote down the finish, the exact time, the exact round. So I know you kind of went on. You said you wrote. Was it the night before or the day of you did it? Um, the first day I got to the hotel, I think I wrote it down. I usually I haven't written it down yet. I've been it's I've been running around the whole day, but. Um, Usually the first night I write it down. Interesting. So I, before we get into that part and maybe see what you're feeling, how many times have you written down like the right rounds? Maybe you didn't get the right like method or like so. How many times you've gotten it right within the right like round and method realm? Oh, but not yeah. like the time, obviously. A, a good, a good many, a good many. Um, my first knockout, I think, uh, in my amateur career. I wrote it down like round one. I was wrong on the time, but I wrote down round one knockout and got it. And a couple of these professional ones too, I think. I'm assuming you Maybe, didn't write down uh, decision. I'm assuming you didn't write that one down. No, that's the thing. I've never, I don't write that down. So it's like, <laughs> you know, I kind of always write knockout down. So I'm bound to get it right, you know. Yeah, you're bound to get it right. <laughs> and yeah. if you're getting, if you're going to get the knockout, I mean, you're going to get it. Like you should be close, at least to the range. I mean, if you're in most knockouts usually round one, round two, and usually I'm assuming most, pretty much every time you're writing round one knockout. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, I think I think maybe there have been other fights where I thought maybe this might go second round, but uh, I don't know. I don't keep them, honestly. That's the thing. I think that's the the power in it is I don't I don't like cherish it and and put it up on a wall and look at it all day long and think like I have to do this. I just kind of write it and forget about it. And if Abe hadn't caught a picture of that, um I probably wouldn't even have known. Didn't you didn't you didn't you know though when you got the knockout you're like holy shit I actually like drilled it like it was kind of cool yeah, it was that's, like a that's that's what I mean my my manager took a picture of it in the hotel room before the fight when we were uh, hanging out okay so if he hadn't taken a picture of it I wouldn't even have known probably uh, he took the picture and then was yelling at me in the cage that I got it right and that's when I <laughs> kind of realized I thought I just was like really close and then after I got out of the cage I realized it was on the money. Oh man, that's but, crazy. That's kind of that's like hitting yeah. a lottery. That's literally like hitting a lottery of just like yeah. predicting your own things. And it's crazy yeah, how like that there's your mind. I heard your thought process was like 15 is too generic. Go up to 17. I do that shit all the time with stuff. Just yeah, like, yeah, it's too generic. I gotta switch up. Maybe like yeah. a six, a seven. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. what are you thinking about for this next one? What, what are you, what are you leaning towards? I'm assuming round one knockout, maybe like three thirty one. I actually had written. I think I written down back back home like three forty three. Oh so that's God. probably what I'm going to write down here, 343. I like that number. I like that number, too. I was pretty damn close yeah. there. I was actually pretty damn close. You were. There. I thought you were going to say it. 
<laughs> now that would have been that would have been pretty crazy. That would have been pretty hey, wild. If I knock this guy out at 343, you gotta publish this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I'm you need to publish this before the fight. Well, I'm publishing it tomorrow. Okay, we're, perfect. We're going straight so we to can, work. We can look yeah. back to this. We'll, we'll we'll have we'll have the roots. We'll have the roots ready to go. So if you get it at yeah. 331, then I'm the prophet here this time. Yes. So, yeah. So there's about a 15, just, 15 second window, like no pressure. Yeah. So you kind of have to get it done. Yeah. Well, according to like the MMA Twitter, I actually have the ability to time when I'm going to knock guys out. So I'll just wait until we're at that right time, and then I'll then I'll do it. Yeah. Or in, that's in, the real thing. Other parts of MMA Twitter who are also saying the guys are just like laying down for you. Then there's those people too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's probably not as likely as me having like the ability to just time knockouts perfectly. Yeah. I don't. I don't that's think people are going realistic. out there and just like uh, just like oh yeah, dude, hit me. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy people are crazy these crazy. are people that have never been in a fight in their life nope not at all did you say speaking of i mean did you see on twitter today like julian marquez going after uh that guy who was like in his dms i did actually i thought it was pretty funny it is pretty funny luckily you've never had to go through with that but law, law of nature in the game of mma at some point or another something crazy is going to happen it may not be a loss maybe something kind of weird like a split decision or something and everyone's gonna be like, and you're yeah. like, you didn't deserve to fucking win, you fucking bum. And you're gonna have all those yeah. games. And, but you haven't had that yet, which is good. Yeah, not really. Uh, maybe after my decision, I think I had some people like, you're a bum, you're boring, you know. But uh, <laughs> it's bound to happen. You know, one day I'll have a fight maybe that people don't love and they're gonna have something to say. But it'll it'll come from the people that have never probably even left the basement so i'm not worried about it that's always who they are it's, it's also the people don't understand they just don't understand like what goes into it like the thought like there's just yeah. they just don't it's like they think everything's a video game they think it's all just a video game and if you're not getting first round finishes you're a bum it's just yeah yeah stupid yeah shit. exactly stupid shit. yeah stupid shit. i don't look at that stuff very much no no it's cancer it's a lot of cancer so yeah. let's let's talk about this fight with jason gonzalez like obviously it is a step up in competition but i don't think it's kind of what you might have expected um is there a party that kind of like that competitor and he's like i kind of wish i got a higher bid in comp not looking at not looking past the guy i mean he is a, he is still a tough opponent but is there a party's like i kind of wish it was like a guy who was ranked in the division uh right now my honest answer is i don't i don't really care i know i'm fighting him so that's all i'm thinking about you know yeah. Uh I'm excited to fight him. I think it's it's a it's a step up and I think I'm gonna get to showcase a lot more in this fight. So I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean I feel like it's I know even the past two you said sometimes like I think you said it's like trickier to fight the guys before like really when you get up towards the top. Yeah. It's a little more hard. It's like you, there's not as much tape. There's not as like it's just yeah. they're kind of a little more not reckless as a, maybe that is the right word. Yeah. They are. Yeah, you can't find the tendencies. Yeah. Yeah, they're a little more unorthodox where the better guys have kind of patterns that, that we learn, I guess you could say. Yeah. And uh, they're more traditional. You can kind of predict and expect what they're going to do a little more easily than the early on guys, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But these, but the early on guys, a lot more openings a lot more for finishes, which is the of the game. Yes, and it helps guys like Definitely. yourself who are rising up the charts – Get more yeah. of those highlight highlight reels. So another thing too is like, is it a little bit disappointing too? Like, I mean, I, I hate sounding like a fucking broken record. It's a little bit disappointing, like not being on the main card though. I feel like this would have been a prime opportunity to put you on the main card, open up uh, the uh, and open up the entire main event, main card. Yeah, it would have been cool. I don't know, man. They they must they have a plan. Whatever whatever they're thinking, I'm not in charge. I'm just here to fight. Make me first fight. Make me an event. As long as I'm beating guys and getting paid and climbing the climbing the ladder, then what are you gonna do? You know, these things are out of my control. They are out of control. But hey, I mean, the the one positive spin zone, I will, is like it's on YouTube and everyone can watch it. It's not like you have to go out yeah. there and buy Showtime. Everyone can watch it. Exactly. If anything, maybe it gets me out there a little bit more. Yeah, exactly. And it's oh. all it's all. And then even after the event, it's still up there for stream, so people can go back and rewatch the the highlight yeah. reel knockout that you're gonna get. So true. It's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See spin zones, spin zones. And so, yes. And one more thing about this fight. And so before, like, obviously you've already said, knock out all the kind of stuff and you're excited to actually get in there and fight. But what's the thing you're most excited about with this fight? It's your fifth time in Connecticut. Uh, it is your seventh fight in the, in Bellator. Uh, like what's the thing that excites you the most about this fight? Uh, I don't know, man. They all excite me. I think, I think just the opportunity to show how much better I'm getting. You know, in the gym, I'm, I'm getting so much better and I'm getting more and more comfortable. Every fight, I'm more – I was rewatching some of my old fights recently and I could see, like, I wasn't throwing my punches as confidently. 
I wasn't getting my head offline as much. So I didn't have like the little nuances that I have now. So it'll be exciting for me to go out there and maybe have a little bit more exchange, a uh, few more exchanges in this fight and, and showcase some counter offense and defense and new attacks. I haven't really shown that much so far. It's just been, you know, a few things. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited. I, I can show more. I was, I was another thing I was asked. Is there ever a part of you is like there's some stuff I just don't want to show in some of these fights? I want to hold on for later. Or even yeah. when you when you get in there, is it just like no holds barred? But or are you like consciously thinking like I don't want to show this? Oh no 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 no! I, every fight is your last fight. You know I'm trying to win at any means by any means. You know, so I would never I would never not not show something. Of course, after the fact, I'm happy. Like great, you know, as much as I want to show how much better I'm getting. If I have to keep showing one right hand after another right hand and that's what gets the job done, then I can save the other stuff for down the line whenever I need it, you know? Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. So yeah. another thing for, like, I'm sure you've gotten this before, but I didn't I didn't ever get to it. But, like, at what point in your wrestling career did you decide, like, yes, I'm going into MMA? Uh, the very beginning. Really? Pretty much. Yeah, when I was, like, 13 years old. I actually just reposted a story. My mom found a picture of me uh, from whenever I was, like, 10 years old with my hands up uh my uncle used to make me and my brother box like we would throw on the like the everlast cheap gloves and we'd box in the basement so like i always kind of liked boxing and, and fighting and stuff and then whenever i was a little bit older like maybe 13 or maybe 14 i uh i was watching a gsp fight and i decided like well this is what i want to do when i'm done wrestling i was gonna say i know i know gsp was your inspiration that was uh that was the guy around so i know you got the tattoo there and what are the other yeah. tattoos? Are there what are the so I know did you get that? I'm you know, didn't you say you got that a little bit because of GSP? Yeah, I was young and like I was pretty inspired by him and stuff. So of course there's inspiration from him. It's not his tattoo, it's my Yeah, own, I but, know it's a little different. Yeah, it's yours. But yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of the same the same like kind of general concept, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 What's do you have do you have any new new tattoos you're showing off this week, or is it all all I have, them. I have a bunch. I mean, this is the newest one. I just got like a little samurai sword with uh cherry blossoms. Ooh. added to the added to this because i have like the butterfly and the bee that's not new it's somewhat new Someone. and then i have like this tiger so you're gonna so go, are you going are you going for full, full arm sleeves at some point or is that the game plan i don't know, I don't oh, know. No. maybe I'm, it's growing on me i wanted to do a forearm sleeve but it's starting to i'm really really loving my guy mark in pittsburgh is he's amazing he kills it so i'll probably end up letting him go the whole way up <laughs> just let him freestyle i mean he's doing a good job just yeah. let him freestyle let him do his thing. i could Honestly, I could let him. I could let him do that, and it would be good. Yeah, I bet he would do a very good job. So, and as we kind of already said, so you have your connections to Miami now, as you train down there, and you got your connections to Pittsburgh. Let's let's say something nice about the people up here up north. I mean, I'm a Midwest guy. I got to represent the Midwest. Yeah. Um, you got to give a. So let's say like, what's the best thing about training in Miami? Best thing about training in Pittsburgh, and then the worst thing about Pittsburgh, and then the worst thing about training in Miami. It's so like a, the the pro of each, and then the con of each. The best thing about training in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um. My coaches, for sure. My, my coaches, um, Isaac, Matt, and Philip are, are the best. They got me ready for, for the jump to American Top Team. I showed up at American Top Team ready, you know, versus showing up as, like, an amateur who didn't know how to fight, which was, which was huge for me. Um, so that's the best thing about training in Pittsburgh. And also, I'm, I'm at home with my mom, with my family. You know, that's super nice. Worst thing about training in Pittsburgh was the drive because I live – like my home is in a place called Johnstown. So it's an hour and a half away from, from my practices in Pittsburgh. So some days I would drive like I would drive an hour and a half to jujitsu in the morning for 10 a.m. practice. Then I'd sit around and kill time until like 430, drive maybe 45 minutes to the other side of the city, box, and then drive about two hours because it'd be traffic, two hours back home. And that would be like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday situation sometimes. So that was the worst thing. Now – at ATT, I live five minutes from the gym. So I get up whenever I want. And I'm right there. And uh, best thing about ATT, probably same situation. Best coaches in the world, best training partners in the world. Everything's right there. It's five minutes away. Worst thing is maybe being away from home. Maybe. And it's hot as shit. Yeah. So hot. But uh, it's not really, it's not, it's not too bad either way, you know. Nah, nah. You, the sweats, uh, the sweat, the sweat, the sweats come up a lot easier, you know. You, you sweat a little better, lose some weight a little easier, you know, all that kind of fun. Yeah. Stuff. Well, yeah, if, if 
if I had to cut weight in Florida, that would that would be great. But yeah, but you're in Connecticut. Out. Yeah, it's a yeah, little. Exactly. But there, we got a heat wave. If you had to go outside, you can go through and what is it like 99 yeah. there probably? Like it's like 100 degrees uh, I here. Doubt it. What? 99 degrees in Connecticut right now? Maybe I don't know. It's like 99 degrees here in Indiana and like in Chicago. No way. I don't think. I got the window open here. Oh, I guess it's nice. Well, it makes sense. It's got to be like 75 out maybe. It was nice when we got here, but not like not a heat wave. Not a heat wave? Well, never mind. Take that back. <laughs> so, I feel for you, man. That's terrible. Oh, that's miserable. That's miserable. Can you get the humidity? Yeah. The, that that yeah. humidity in the Midwest? Oh, terrible. Yeah. So one thing before I let you go, I know, like, as you said, we, you grew up around Pittsburgh. You're a Steelers fan, but your dad was a Cowboys fan. If you had to pick one to choose, you're not going to – this is not like a this forever decision, but if you had to pick between the Steelers and Cowboys, who would you choose Like to be like, okay, that is my team? Well, if, okay. If I had to pick – who I want to see win the Super Bowl? Yeah, pretty much. Like yeah. tomorrow, it would be the Cowboys because I've never seen them win a Super Bowl. That's fair. That's true. Their last Super Bowl win was '95, and I was born March '95, so <laughs> I have never seen them win a Super Bowl. But I've seen the Steelers win a few Super Bowls. Which is nice. So which is nice. I need to see the Cowboys win a Super Bowl before I die. Well, they need to get a new coach probably to do that. <laughs> Yeah, that's been the case for, like, my whole Ever. life. But Yeah, pretty much forever. Yeah. And they'll get Sean Payton, yeah. what, like, two years probably? Isn't that, like, the whole, isn't that, like, the whole, like, underground scheme going on? Uh, who knows, dude? Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. I can't. I just, I just watch and, and hope. Watch and hope. That's all you can do. All right, man, so before I let you go, obviously, I think we've already kind of hinted at it. Round one, 343. Yep. Uh, yep. That's the prediction, the official prediction? Yeah. All right. Love to hear it, man. Uh, before I let you go, if you want to give any shout outs to team sponsors, all that kind of fun stuff, go on ahead. Yeah. Well, I already mentioned Trouble. Uh, mm-hmm. My sponsor, check them out. Axe and Sledge Supplement Company in Pittsburgh. Um, Angry Duck. And my suit guy, Mark Russell Suits in uh, Boca, Florida. Is that, the, is that the old black suit I saw you wearing earlier? Is that what you're wearing for the press conference this week? Yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm, I don't know if I'm part of the press conference, but. Uh, At least a media uh, day. I, I don't even I don't even have that on my schedule. I don't know. We'll see. Really? Oh, I have I don't have anything. I don't know. <laughs> I thought it would be. I thought I thought, but uh, I have suits just in case, so I'm ready. Well, worst case scenario, you just have to wear it after the fight and before the fight. Yeah. So, I'm wearing go. it to the fight. Yeah, for sure. it's clean. It's clean. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I like yeah. it all black. Oh, it's always clean. Thanks. All right, man. Appreciate you coming on. You have a good one. Good yeah, luck man. this weekend. Thanks, bro. All right, that's our man Cody. Another prospect. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't have a friend of the program fight for the title. Uh, featherweight title with AJ McKee, but uh, who knows? AJ should be in the UFC soon. So uh, let's go on into our winners and losers. I'm going to keep my first winner nice, short, and sweet. Uh, my winner goes to the Lightning. Congratulations on getting your first win in the Stanley Cup Finals. We are recording this um, right as puck drops, um, so I'm probably going to look like a fucking idiot after this, but uh, shout out to the Lightning for getting the first win, and they're my winners uh, today. Harrison, your first winner. So my, my first winner goes against what you just said. My first winner is Valerian Nechuskin, uh, the forward for the Colorado Avalanche, as he has been having a hell of a opening uh, first two games for the Stanley Cup. He's already up to three goals for the first two games and an assist, just absolutely dominating in an Avalanche team that's having a hell of a series already. And I don't know. I like the Avalanche tonight. I really think that they – and. Oh, no, the Avalanche almost just scored. Uh, so, a bit, bit of live commentary while we uh, do our winners and losers. But, yeah, Valerian yeah. Nechuskin, hell of a I'm series. Not even, I'm not even watching just so I can be disappointed in the end. Um, let's go on into my loser. My loser goes to Twitter troll slash um, people who DM <laughs> athletes and fighters. Uh, if, if you're on MMA Twitter today, you saw this. Julian Marquez um, got knocked out against Gregory, the rebel cop Rodriguez. I mean, it was a pretty brutal fight. I mean, he got knocked down five times. It was a tough, tough, tough performance for him, but he'll bounce back. But anyway, that's not what we're talking about. Uh, this guy named Tyler underscore war 13, <laughs> please don't message him as he's already requested us to stop messaging him. But he, I'm going to read through his reply. So he says, wake up sleepy head. This is after he gets knocked out. You bomb. Up, you just got pieced to the shadow realm. You're dead. Uh, those are three straight. He just uh, three piece this guy and um no reply. That's a tough scene. Uh, then he replied to the story. Uh, nah, you're not good. You're fucking dog shit, and you sold the lay so hard. Go to hell, you fucking bum. Fuck you. Um, Buddy's big mad about something. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then luckily for us, then um, Julian have very happily posted that guy's. He took the screenshot and posted it in his story, um, and he was very mad. So this is how Tyler Ward responds. 
Again, please, please don't message this guy. Um, Miley Cyrus don't, doesn't don't, want don't your don't. cock. You made Greg Rich tonight. Good shit. He's laughing that 50K to the bank after four knockdowns of the first round. Money fly, money fly, burr, burr, burr emojis. Um, Gregory <laughs> knocked any last brain cells you had into another dimension, my boy. And then finally, Julian responds. <laughs> oh, looks like you need a friend. So to recap, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven messages to get Julian to respond. Um, God, I hope this kid was fucked up. Uh, next one. I have tons of friends laughing at your miserable performance. I don't think this kid has friends. And the fact that you are making me so go either. viral for clowning you is hitting different right now. What's the move? Fading you every fight? Yeah, that's free money. Uh, and so that was the last one we got in the original message. And uh, so this is when Julian posted this on Twitter. And uh, everyone immediately uh, started messaging this kid, getting his family involved and all that other kind of stuff. And, you know, sometimes people can get aggressive. So let's move on. This is a, a day later. Tyler Ward reaching back out. Actually, and I don't know how many times he's. Res- this, I'm pretty sure this is not all the DMs. I'm pretty sure Tyler kept going. I know, I, I'm sure he just kept going off and off and off and off, and yeah. he just had to pick and choose the funniest ones. He's this guy's definitely daddy money if I've ever seen it. Like this is. Oh the, yeah. This is the embodiment of just being entitled. Uh, here we go on the Tyler. Uh, Tyler Ward twenty two underscore. He changed his uh, his name. He changed his name on Instagram. He even changed his profile picture too. So, um, hmm, hmm, maybe he's not liking what's happening. You don't have to share anything else, man. Enough. You already did what you had to do on Twitter. <laughs> just move on already. Man, what a bitch. Like, actually, just posting. Stop posting about me. I apologize for what I said to you, okay? You don't have to have to accept it. But at least just stop posting about me. I'm tired of death threats. When didn't I? Th- when, when I didn't threaten you, I just talked some shit. Now Julian well, knows he has them in a palm. Yeah, yeah. He, oh, my God. Like, it's great. Play. Man, welcome to the life of a UFC fighter who just got who gets knocked out in the first round. It's a tough scene. Sucks, yeah, man. Probably cool. doesn't feel good when people you don't know say disrespectful things. I get it, man. I'll make sure it stops at this next post. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> no need for another post. You're just gonna get your followers to DM me more stuff, man, and threaten to kill me. It's not even like that all for my end. I shared my opinion on your performance without mentioning any threats, and definitely not your family. Man, man, this kid is. He's, 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 on he's, he's on a bender. He's on a he's on a bender and a half. No, I think he's tweaking. He's tweaking. He's getting oh, some threats. Pre- yeah. Oh, there people found his address. I just I did want to point this out. Oh, they did man. find his address. Yeah, they found his address. I don't think they're gonna they're no one's gonna do it. Well, I take that back. People are crazy. Anyway, back to Julian's message. I'm not sending anything rude, negative, or hateful to you. I'm just sharing what you've been saying to me to the world. It's not my fault random people are giving you unwanted an opinion about your marks. Hmm. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? It's like Getting random people to give you advice for something they have no idea what they're talking about. Hmm. I wonder what that's about. So here goes Tyler again. They aren't giving an opinion. They're threatening me and my family. And what I've sent today is an apology. So if you want something to post, you can post that or just stop posting about me. Please, I regret what I have said to you. And I'm dealing with my family being sent threats. So please understand that. And please stop posting about me. I'm asking very nicely. It's one thing for people to threaten me. I can't take it. But my family, it's not right. And it's not, it's not right. Where are we at? Oh, just please leave got, it be. Got lost in the ridiculousness. Well, no, I thought there was another slide and there yeah. wasn't. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so that ended up happening. And then I'm pretty sure they sent a family friend in. Um, and this family friend said, let it go. MMA fighters should be above their professionals. Sometimes a reaction to an insult is over. Is worse than the insult itself. It's over. Hand up emoji. And then everyone just kind of roasted her in the comments. And uh, Shelly Young um she joined april 2022 uh she just looks like a karen so uh shout out shelly young um so yeah don't uh, rule of thumb don't go after these fighters in the dms man like they're uh yeah, it's not gonna end well for you it's never gonna end well for you i've actually uh harrison hasn't been in the past couple meetings uh, past couple interviews he's been busy with his uh his real job uh but uh what i've been telling all the fighters is to start taking screenshots and that was before this i said like, start taking screenshots like when you lose take screenshots it's the funniest yeah. shit it goes viral every time and it does go viral every time because these guys always look stupider than shit so uh my loser is twitter trolls and instagram trolls um because it's crazy what happens to them when it gets reciprocated right back at them they just fall they crumble they crumble mm-hmm. and they realize what it's like to actually you know live with that kind of stuff not built for it. So Harrison, uh, that was a really long loser. Harrison, you're a loser. Well, I mean, no one's quite built like UFC fighters. I will say that. 
They but, they go through. They go through some shit. Like NFL players, NBA players, they get shit. UFC fighters, dude, they just got knocked out in front of millions of people. Get the, oh my mm-hmm. god, dude! I can only imagine like the the roller coaster of emotions after that. Yeah, it's wild. Uh, but my loser uh, is Corey Perry. Uh, this is going back to hockey again. He is on his third new team in a row after being with the Dallas Stars and the Montreal Canadiens the last two years. And you might recognize those two teams as the last two teams to lose to the Tampa Bay Lightning in the Stanley Cup final. He is currently with the Tampa Bay Lightning, and they are down to nothing. So if Corey Perry loses three Stanley Cups in a row with three different teams, I think that's the funniest outcome possible. If like, you're the, if you're the Toronto Maple Leafs, you sign him so you're guaranteed a slot in the Stanley Cup Finals. Exactly, it's as easy as that. Um, easy as that. I, I, but, I Canada, you're welcome. Yeah, but what, what was funny? Valeri Nachuskin just put the puck in the net, but it was called back for offside after a, like a five minute challenge. So I, my winner was about to be proven right, but just just challenges, just challenges. challenges. All right. Well, my winner goes to Clay Thompson. Um, moving on. Clay Thompson today has been a menace. First, he lost oh, his yeah. hat um, driving his boat. He dropped his ring in the crowd. He ran over a fan because he was tumbling from whatever substances he was on. Um, uh, the Warriors in themselves have just been winners. Uh, here, I know your Draymond's your winner. Um, yeah. They've, it's just the, the way they've been acting after this finals. I love it. It's peak pettiness. It's been perfect. And they deserve it. They deserve it. For the, what they they've do. gone through the past three years, like Clay's two injuries. Like if Clay, like, if Clay punched someone today, I'd be like, I get it. It's cool. It's whatever. Like people wrote him off as a player after that, even though Maple Jordan is the number two now. I'm, I'm, I'm just let's get that out there mm-hmm. real quick. Just saying, Maple Jordan truther here. Um, but Clay Thompson is a big winner, though. He I mean, he's just he's just been oh, a menace. Yeah. They've all been menaces. Uh, it's crazy that they won Game Seven though last night, and they're already having a parade though today. Happy Father's Day. Yeah, Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. It was uh, uh what did I, no, I'm not saying that. It's been it's been <laughs> yeah. so good. I mean. Uh, it's just been incredible watching them do whatever the fuck they want to. And as you said earlier, it's absolutely deserved. Like it's good on so them. Deserved. And Draymond ripping on Boston has been so, it's been so nice. Mm-hmm. Chef kiss. And, and, and I love the graphic it. coming out again from the, uh, we talked about it. The like series predictions from ESPN, like the FPI cool. had like Boston's like 86% chance to win. Every one of their moms was like, that's no way. No, that's not, no. no, that was not accurate. You don't write off Steph Curry mm-hmm. like that. Mm, Not stupid. only Steph Curry, but like Clay Thompson too, Maple Jordan, who's been balling out. Mm. I mean, Draymond may not have had the best series, but he like, you out, know though. he's gonna pull some shit in the play in the in the finals because he, he always like pulls three it threes. Off. He had like three threes yeah. in Game Six. It was exactly. nuts. It was they nuts they also. always find a way, and you know, good on the Warriors for proving that they are in fact a goddamn dynasty. They are a dynasty, and I'm excited to yeah. see what happens next. I also love seeing uh, Andrew Wiggins being faded as fuck all week. It's been great. Oh, it's, it's been it's awesome. Been great. It's been great. Oh, I, I feel bad, so bad for Kaminga, right? Because he's 19. Oh, yeah, and also he, he has like an iPhone 6. I don't know if you've seen his videos. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. they're disgusting. They're disgusting. I could <laughs> say he's my loser. Uh, my loser goes to Drake. He dropped an unexpected album on Friday. Uh, he's paying millions, if not billions of dollars to people to try to act like this thing's good. It's terrible. Jimmy Cooks, like, it's like when you watch, a, it's, like when, it's like when Chris Paul hit a three when they were down 42 in game seven or game six or whatever. It's, it's like, oh, there's the, a three pointer as the Suns drop it down to 42. And that, yeah. that was Jimmy Cooks. Mm-hmm. It's the meme of like the Bugatti in the trailer park. Yeah. Like, oh, Jimmy Cooks, such a good song. It, so it, good. But it's, it's 21 good. as well. Anytime 21 comes mm-hmm. on as a feature, you know it's going to be a bang. I posted it. I was like, uh, if Drake really wanted to be in EDM and house music, you would have gotten a bigger person. Someone just came out and said Black Coffee. Black Coffee is like, Black Coffee to me is like, uh, how do I put this in respectable terms? I'm closer to Black Coffee than Black Coffee is to Drake in terms of like notoriety. That's mm. how I'm, that's how I'm gonna put it out there. Like, if Drake wanted yeah. to be, if he wanted a house guy, he would go for like, like he would Dippo get the people headlining. Yeah, he would get yeah. Well, Dippo, I don't even consider Dippo like a uh, house guy, yeah. but in terms of name value, that's the kind of like value. Yeah. Like, you're looking for guys who are like headlining festivals, things like that. But uh, no, Drake's not doing house music. It's just like a B sides album. It sounds like minus Jimmy Cooks, which is good. So uh, shout out <laughs> Jimmy Cooks. Shout out Jimmy Cooks. Shout out Twenty One Savage. Yeah, shout out 21 for saving, uh, for being the one saving Grace Harrison, your last loser. 
My last loser, it, it, it touches a bit of a sore spot for me this year because I'm a, I'm a big Chelsea FC fan, and we were supposed to be so good. And it looks like Romelu Lukaku's second stint with Chelsea is coming to a very disappointing bitter end as he's going to be sent back to Inter Milan on a 9 million euro loan. And I'm just so, so pissed it didn't work out because it should have been, we should have been dominating the Premier League. We should have been dominating the Champions League. And Lukaku just never figured it out. And he was ripping on the fans and it was just the worst possible situation. So screw you, Lukaku. I, I mean, I hope you, I hope you do the best you can at Inter, but that's two disappointing stints with Chelsea. So never come back, please. All right. And well, that's, that's talking got, soccer. And that's talking soccer. Let's go quick little shout outs, rest in pieces. Um, so I just want to give a quick rest in peace to Jerry's erect man horn slash as a man horn in general. He shaved it off. Mm. Uh, the, the meme that is Jerry's man horn is dead. I'm actually like kind of sad. Like it, it's like his just seeing his little fucking ponytail man horn thing bounce around mm-hmm. when he was fighting Glover. It took me until the next day to realize he purposely like the last fight. It was fucking erect. This time when he fought Glover, it was uh, flaccid. Like it was just like loose. So if he got caught in a choke, he didn't have to worry about his man horn getting in the way. I don't know oh, how that I didn't realize sense. that during the fight. I don't know how I did not realize that during the fight. Um, but he shaved the whole fucking thing off. I'm low key pissed because he that yeah. was like iconic look. Of that like was that who, was like he had his like mm-hmm. katana. He was doing his whole samurai thing. He just looked like a UFC four video game character. If yeah. He's only missing. He's the only thing he was missing was like the racist tattoos and things like that. But <laughs> we can those don't those aren't real life. But, those aren't. Real yeah, life. that's just yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, sixteen like no, not even sixteen like twelve year old kids thinking they're being edgy. Yeah, exactly. Twelve year old kids who think it's funny to be racist and things like that, which it's not. Um, yeah. Moving on to another rest in peace was Izzy sex tape. Um, now. <laughs> I just want to say, man, like, you know how, like, when people leak sex tapes, it's usually by accident. Like, when Jamal Murray had his whole thing, like, yeah, it was, just, like, it yeah. was obviously a mistake. This he put fucking purpose. emojis and stuff on there. He had, like, a hashtag on there. What yeah. the fuck? That was so purposeful. I'm pretty sure he was fucked up. But still. <laughs> he might have meant to put that on, like, a private story. And he goes, I'm going to send this out to my millions of followers real quick. Yeah. And bam. Yeah, and it was, it was so, apparently the movie it was referencing to was like a movie about like domestic abuse. So that's a tough scene. <laughs> um, oh Jesus, that's a that's a that's a real tough scene. Uh, what the fuck? On, what a what a way to celebrate Juneteenth. So shout out to a lot of Sonya on sex tapes. Uh, what else have I got on my little list? Um, yeah, shout out to Adrian Yanez <laughs> for the first round knockout. Uh, that was big. That was big. That was. Um, Shout out! Oh, also, fight of the night and performance bonuses. Forgot about this. Forgot about this. Real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Fight of the night goes to Phil Haas versus DC. DC by a landslide won the fight, but it was very entertaining. I'd also go with Tony Kelly versus Cancel Culture as a runner-up for that. Um, purely out the fact that Tony Kelly has embraced being a heel, um, but I don't think it's even him embracing being a heel. I think he's just being the shit bag he is. So shout out Tony Kelly. Um, and then I will say the performance of the night goes to the judges. Again, they are landsliding these performances of the night. They robbed our boy Calvin. Uh, I wouldn't say it was a robbery if they gave if they gave Emmett round three or uh, like because that was that was probably the round that was most in the air. But this dipshit gave round four to Josh Emmett, and that was the round Calvin wobbled Josh. That was easily that was the easiest round of score for Calvin, and this dummy gave it to Josh. Uh, so shout out to the judges for being bad like all night. It was pretty, and they luckily we only had three decisions. So shout out to those Texas judges for living up to the hype of being some of the worst judges in all of MMA. So uh, that's what I got. Harrison, have any more shout outs or rest in pieces or anything like that you want to throw out there? No, it was just uh, till weekend. I was working a lot, so I didn't really pay too much attention to what was going on. So. I got I got really drunk and then I worked. So there we go. All right, that's the show. Uh, Friday uh, we got Brent Primus. Uh, that'll be a fun interview. And then uh, next week we got Brad the Bars. A couple other people coming on the show. So stay tuned for that. We'll see you guys on Friday.
thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around with me all the way to the end. Uh, I just want to once again thank the sponsor of the show, Living.Fit. If you're looking to better yourself, make sure you go to the, download the app or visit the website, Living.Fit today.